Hello, my name is Nelson Virgil, and the founding director of Program for Wellness Restoration, or POWER, a nonprofit organization that I opened in 1994 to help people live better with uh, HIV. I've been positive for almost 30 years. I've learned a lot uh, about the disease um, through my own battles with it, um, and I'm here to tell those of you that just found out you're positive and a little overwhelmed about what to do next. Uh, the main things you need to take care about for, for your health in the next uh, few weeks. The first one is you have to find a good doctor. That's probably the best decision, the most important decision for an HIV positive person. And that's not an easy task sometimes, to find a doctor that has a lot of experience in HIV. Has to have at least 50 patients uh, um, that are HIV positive, a person that has been treated HIV for at least three to four or five years. Um, and sometimes you don't have a choice. Sometimes you don't have insurance, so you have to go through a public clinic and you're assigned a doctor. But if you do have a choice, try to do some research in your area. Uh, ask um, people in the different nonprofit organizations in your city. Uh, go online uh, and I'll give you some resources at the end of this video on how to find a good doctor um, that treats HIV. That's a very important, very important first step. The next step, obviously, after you find a doctor is to um, to find, uh, to find out what your immune system, how your immune system is doing uh, with uh, measurements of your CD4 cells, your immune cells that actually fight HIV and the ones that actually tend to be um, destroyed by HIV, and the viral load, the amount of virus you have in your blood. And a third test that is very important, and it's kind of a newer test that uh, was not really standard a few years ago, is what we call a genotype test. It's a resistance test just to make sure that you did not get infected with a virus that had uh, already pre-existing resistance or mutations. Um, some, sometimes when people are taking medications and they infect others, they can transfer some of the resistance of their medications they've taken in the past to the person that just got infected. So you want to make sure you're not one of those. And if you are, the medications have to be selected such that um, will um, provide an effective control of your virus. I'll speak a little bit about that too. Um, one thing that uh, I don't want to um, um, ignore is that some people don't have insurance. Some people have insurance, and, and HIV is a very costly disease to treat. Um, the, a tripla, one the main treatment for HIV, costs anywhere from fifteen to nineteen thousand dollars a year. So most people cannot afford to pay uh, for that medication and the blood test. So we have drug assistance programs in every state of the United States of America. And I'll give you some resources on how to find out um, what your closest, where your closest clinic um, that provides complete, you know, assistance, depending on your income level, of course. If you're making too much money, then, you know, you have to find out other, other ways like insurance, private insurance. And if you do have insurance, obviously, um, you know, you do have uh, uh, easy access right away to a doctor. So, first of all, if you're HIV positive, you find out you're positive, you get tested, obviously you have to find out um, where to fill out all these forms for the assistance programs, and then they'll proceed to help you, to place you with a doctor and a clinic that can treat you for free. So that's, that's good news uh, in the United States. Um, and also, after you find out your blood work, your CD4 cells, your viral load, and your, whether or not you have resistance, your doctor can sit down with you and go through different treatment options. And we have a lot of them now in, in, in you know, it's, it's an amazing thing that once when I found out I was positive, there was not a single medication and now we have over 28. And we have a lot of new drugs that do not cause the side effects that the old drugs used to cause. So don't be too stressed out about it. I'm not saying they're all benign, but the side effects can be managed a lot easier. We have a few once a day treatments, which is really great. I used to take meds four or five times a day back in the old days. Um, a tripla is the number one and the most commonly used one because it's the one studied the most. But there are other ones um, that just, uh, Complera was also approved, um, but you need to talk to your doctor because medications uh, work better for some patients and not for others. Uh, boosted Rayatas with Truvada, with Truvada, it's another once a day treatment. And uh, very soon we're gonna have a drug called, a uh, combination drug Quad which is an integrating inhibitor plus Truvada. So those are the once-a-day uh, treatments. There are twice-a-day treatments, which are also wonderfully uh, effective, uh, like a Centris plus Truvada. 
So it's kind of very hard for somebody new in the HIV field and the HIV world to make, uh, make up their minds about which one is best. But your doctor, a good doctor, can sit down with you, go through all those options, pluses and minuses, uh, potential side effects or, you know, or benefits, and your viral load and CD4 count can actually help uh, your doctor and uh, you, actually, because it's a decision that the two of you have to make. Not only your doctor, but you also have to, to agree to a certain uh, drug regimen. And after you do that, and you, it's a big step to, to, uh, to start taking medications. I think that most people are terrified. I get emails. I, I'm an expert for thebody.com, and I do lectures all over the country for the past you know, 16 years or so. The first question people ask me is, um, am I going to get lipodystrophy? Am I, is my face going to go? You know, is, are people going to be able to see that I'm HIV positive because the medications are going to change my body? Luckily, the newer medications don't cause those disfiguring side effects. We, we don't use those drugs anymore. Um, you know, you do have to exercise and eat well and make sure because as, as your immune system gets better, you can probably gain some weight. But um, exercising and eating well and making sure, um, you know, you follow your blood work uh, can prevent a lot of those changes. So don't worry about lipoatrophy, facial wasting, that lipo belly that, you know, because it really isn't a, as big of a deal as it used to be. So if that's your fear, don't, don't worry about that, okay? And yes, you have to remember how to take, you know, to take your meds on time. And that's important, especially if you have never taken vitamins. People start taking vitamins uh, for years, it's like, so they're used to taking something. And some people have never taken a pill in their life. So it is an adjustment. And, and it's something that you have to um, find ways to, to adhere to. You know, pill boxes, reminders, uh, text messages. There are some programs online I can, uh, you can you can get through the resources I'm giving you at the end. Things that remind you to take your meds on time, okay? You also have to know what the food requirements of certain medications are. There are two medications, like a tripla is taken on an empty stomach because if you take it with food, it may actually uh, increase the blood levels a little too high and you may get some side effects, you know, like wild dreams and all that. And other, food, other medications like Complera, you need to eat with it or you know, other, other medications. So your doctor has to explain to you how food interacts with your medications. And it's not too complex. Thank God most of the medications we have right now don't have really horribly strict um, uh, food requirements. But you do have to talk to your doctor about it. Um, stop smoking. If you're smoking, stop smoking. Find a way, a program, a, a smoke cessation program. So there's some of them that are provided for free uh, uh, in nonprofits that work in HIV. Uh, talk to your doctor about treatment options for smoke cessation. Smoking is a huge risk factor for cardiovascular disease, lung cancer, and we in HIV tend to have a little bit more of a risk of cardiovascular disease. So you don't want to add that to the complexity of the disease. And if you're drinking alcohol, a lot of it, cut down. I'm not saying all the way. You can moderate two drinks a day max, um, red wine, or you want to have something with dinner. But be careful with too much alcohol consumption. It's not good for your liver, and you may actually forget to take your meds. And it's just not good for your metabolic rate. You can actually gain fat a lot more with uh, alcohol. So, you know, it's not a good thing. But, you know, your mother, your grandmother told you this anyways before you were positive, right? Um, manage stress. Stress is very important. I, I really think that we don't emphasize that uh, strong enough. I, I've probably lost most of my CD4s in the past because of horrible, stressful times that I did not know how to manage, or depression. It is, it is a shock to know you're positive. It's, you're you're going to deal with some stigma you were not used to. The dating uh, game is definitely more complicated to tell somebody that you like that you're positive. It's, it's very stressful. Um, and that's probably the biggest challenge. Uh, most of us have to find some really inner strength that we didn't know we had so that we can do the right things for our health, protect others, be honest with others, uh, slowly, surely, slowly and surely telling people that we love that we are HIV positive, that's very stressful. So find support. Talk to your best friends, go to support groups, nonprofits like, as I said, AIDS um, service organizations, and there's a listing I'm gonna give you at the end. Um, have support groups of people that have been infected for a long time. Some people are just newly infected. Um, find ways to relax. And exercise is a great way to, to manage stress. Uh, volunteer. 
I mean, lots of nonprofits are hurting right now. We don't have enough money. We don't have enough manpower. We need to do fundraisers. Get out of the house. Meet other HIV positive people or people that really care. And you know, they don't have to be positive. You know, they have to be HIV friendly. Um, and, you know, read, do what you like, you know, and try to enjoy life because really life is short and we will live a long life like everybody else. It's not like we're dying anytime soon. But it is important to manage stress because stress can really affect your immune system and your immune response and your depression and your mental health. So find ways, hobbies, volunteer, get out of the house, um, talk to people, join support groups, um, do what you love, get some hobbies, get a puppy, whatever it takes, because that's really important. Um, eat healthy and exercise. Well, we all, we hear this all the time. Our mom, grandma, everybody around us. But what is it? What is eating healthy? Eating healthy is basically lowering your sugar intake. Eat, you can have your desserts once in a while, but don't eat too much sugar. Don't, don't drink sodas. Diet or not, drink a lot of water. Eat uh, you know, lean meats, fish, nuts, vegetables, fruit. Um, try to avoid the sugary stuff, the, 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 the junk foods. You know, you know all that. Most of us know what's right or wrong, but in HIV it's very important because we have some metabolic problems with cholesterol and triglycerides, that may, may make us more prone to having cardiovascular disease and we may even gain some weight. So, you know, no sugar, lots of fiber, lots of good meats like, you know, fish, chicken, lean meats, uh, vegetables of all kinds, fruits, nuts, nuts are very important, yogurt, um, and try to not buy so much processed uh, meat, uh, uh, foods, and, and junk food. Exercise, important, very important for everybody, positive, negative, everybody. But for us, it's probably more important than for most people because uh, not only we keep our bodies in shape, but also exercise can be uh, good for the immune system. Uh, exercise can make us uh, prevent a lot of these body changes that may or may not occur. Bone, our bones may actually get, uh, we may lose bone density in HIV, a lot of us do, without even medications. Medications may make the bone loss a little bit more um, concerning. And exercise, especially weight training, resistance, uh, push-ups, squats, uh, crunches at home, uh, walking every day uh, is actually good for the lungs, good for the immune system, good for your body. And it's also a way to help uh, you manage uh, side effects like high cholesterol and triglycerides and, or blood sugar problems. So exercise is really one of the best medications in HIV. Uh, we don't, obviously, there's not a pill that we can take to avoid exercising. And um, unfortunately, I don't hear doctors prescribing exercise, which every doctor should prescribe exercise to their to their uh, patients. And there are also some nonprofits that provide free exercise counseling too. Vaccines, um, if you, um, you should get tested for hepatitis A and B and C, because uh, those are three hepatitis that can, you can have without knowing, because they're not real symptoms. At A, you have symptoms, but, uh, and if you're free, you were never exposed to A or B, uh, ask your doctor for the vaccines for those two uh, hepatitis. There's not a vaccine for hepatitis C yet. Uh, there are treatments, but uh, that's not the scope of this discussion. So A and B. There's also a new vaccine for men under 26 and women, also young women, uh, an HPV vaccine, the human papillomas virus that can cause uh, cervical cancer in women and anal cancer in both women and men, throat cancer, etc. There's actually a vaccine, very effective, but it's only prescribed to men and women under 26 years of age. Very, it's a new vaccine. It's a very effective vaccine. I would actually get it if I was under 26, but I'm definitely not under 26. Um, and the pneumovax vaccine is uh, for bacterial pneumonia, also if your CD4s are, are above 600. So talk to your doctor. Doctor, what do I need uh, when it comes to vaccines now that I'm HIV positive? Or shingles too, if you're prone to shingles, there's a shingles vaccine. So the doctor will be able to talk to you about it. Um, become knowledgeable about your disease. Uh, some people don't want to hear about it. They test positive, they take meds, and they just don't want to hear about HIV. And that's fine. <clears throat> they may not need to. Some people are doing fine. They take their triplets, they take their pills, they don't have side effects, they, they don't think about HIV, and I say, well, good for them. That's actually the way most of us should live. But some of us uh, may have a side effect here or a concern there, and it's important to have uh, information, and really good information. And Luckily, we have wonderfully effective uh, newsletters uh, in this country. 
Uh, you can subscribe to a newsletter at thebody.com. Um, I'm a bunch of, uh, we, there's probably 20 experts there that, that answer questions. I have a column there. You can send me emails and I'll answer, try to answer your questions. You can subscribe to magazines, free magazines like POS, P-O-Z, and Test Possibly uh, Aware, which is another magazine that's free. So if you really, if you had those three sources of information, you're probably doing pretty well. Uh, thebody.com, which is new, uh, a weekly newsletter you get by email, and pause or test positively aware, uh, test positively aware, uh, they're mailed to your house. Okay. If you uh, once you find out your CD4 cell counts, uh, and if they are under 200, um, which is a little concerning, you may be more prone to having some other infections. Uh, your doctor will probably put you on something called Bactrim. <clears throat> it's one of the options. There are others to prevent PCP pneumonia, which is probably the number one cause of, of, of illness in those that have very low immune systems. Usually when you start medications, your CD4 cells are gonna go up, your immune system is gonna get better. Some people go up a lot faster than others, so don't be comparing yourself, don't be worrying so much that, you know, because in some studies have shown that people, CD4 cell counts still go up even five years after they start treatment. So sometimes it's a very slow process. At the beginning of the three first four months, you're gonna get you know, 50 to 100 CD4s, and then slowly but surely, things start uh, uh, stabilizing. So don't don't get too stressed out about whether or not your CD4s are going up uh, fast enough. Um, if you have fatigue, uh, sexual dysfunction, depression, lack of focus, ask your doctor for to test you for hormone hormones hormone levels like testosterone and thyroid, because if you have low um, either thyroid or testosterone you will have all these symptoms and those uh, hormones can be replaced with treatment and, and very, very mainstream nowadays to do that. But you do have to talk to your doctor about it because some doctors are not probably going to bring this up, uh, especially the sexual dysfunction uh, part of it. And that's, I'm not saying that HIV positive have more sexual dysfunction than negatives. It's just that it's something that most of us go through, through um, because of aging. Um, taking a, take a multivitamin a day. You know, any kind, whatever is cheap um, that you can get out there, just just to make sure that you're covering your B vitamins and your minerals, um, even if you're eating well. Uh, and this is an inflammatory disease that may, may require more macronutrients in your body. So take one a day at least. If you want to be fancy, you can go on my website and see a more complex uh, regimen. I really do not recommend it for those who are just starting treatment because you're starting to get ready to start taking pills and you don't want to overload and overdo it, okay? Vitamin D, though, is very important. Vitamin D is one of those hot vitamins that every researcher is talking about that may prevent a lot of the bone loss that we may see in HIV. We don't have long-term studies, but it's a cheap vitamin, 2,000 to 4,000 units a day. Uh, it's good enough, and, and it's not gonna, it doesn't have any toxicities. Last but not least, uh, try to avoid uh, activating your immune system. What does that mean? Every time you get a new disease, let's say you're having unsafe sex with somebody and you get an STD like gonorrhea or syphilis, your immune system is fighting the new infection. And when that happens, it activates it. Everything goes crazy and starts, you know. And that's not good. That actually is not good for the immune system. It overtaxes the immune system. It can actually cause some uh, viral load increases. It can cause some CD4 decreases. So try to protect yourself uh, from other infections. Um, by, you know, making sure that you get tested for STDs. If you're very sexually active, try to, as best as you can, to have safe sex. If you're not having safe sex, talk to your doctor about it. There's, you know, some doctors are going are gonna to talk to you in, in very frank terms. But do make sure that you know if you have any STDs, you're treating them fast and you're detecting them fast. For more information about all I've talked about, you can go to the website of my nonprofit, uh, powerusa.org. That's P-O-W-E-R-U-S-A.org. Uh, I have a lot of information about everything I talked about. I have a resource list. Uh, I'm information on different different topics in HIV. So just keep your faith. It's going to be, it gets better, like the videos say, it gets better. And, you know, there may be a cure within the next, you know, few years. And, um, and it's something to look forward to and something to, to attain to stay healthy for. So, and if you need any more information, go to the website or you can send me a question at thebody.com under the experts uh, column. Thank you very much and I hope you enjoyed this video.